All right, it looks like it's studying out a little bit. So I think we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's session about student life at Lind University. We have a really wonderful panel and presentation prepared for you today. Uh, first, to introduce ourselves, my name is Audrey Savage, and I'm an International Communications Officer here at Lund, working in the International Marketing and Recruitment Team, and I'll be the moderator for the panel today. We have uh, several of our current students here today who are ready to share their experiences of life at Lund, so I'll give them a moment to introduce themselves as well, so perhaps we can go around starting with Prince. Hello, everyone. My name is Prince. I'm from Ghana, and I'm studying the Master's in Public Health Program. Great, thanks. Beatrice? Hi, everyone. I'm Beatriz. Uh, I'm studying the Disaster Risk Management and Climate Change Adaptation Master Program. I'm originally from Spain, but I moved here to Sweden from the US. Well, thanks. Siddhi? Hi, everyone. I'm Siddhi. I'm from India, and I'm studying my Master's in Cultural Criminology. Great. Sorry. Hi everyone, I'm Lorraine, I'm from France and I'm studying the Master in Social Anthropology. And Nina. Hi, I'm Nina, I'm from the US and I'm also doing my Master's in Public Health. Wonderful. So before we get started today, just a few uh, logistical notes for everyone. So of course, the main reason we're here today is to answer your questions. So you can post those in the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. And if you see that someone has already posted the same question that you have, you can use the little thumbs up button to upvote that question. And that will send it to the top of the screen to make sure that we uh, make sure to answer that question. And before we start today, I have a very brief uh, presentation to give uh, about student life at Lund, kind of the different ways in which you can get involved. And then we're going to use the majority of our time today, of course, talking with our students. Uh, finally, I also want to mention that because this is a presentation about student life, and we of course are joined here by current students, we're going to really focus all of the questions today on the student experience and what it's actually like to study at Lund. So if you have questions about the application process or scholarships or anything like that, it's better for you to join some of our sessions tomorrow where we have full sessions only about the application process and all those kinds of questions. I'll also send some links out uh, at the end of the session today to where you can contact our uh, team and directly if you have questions about applications, but otherwise we're going to set those kind of questions aside today and really focus on learning and hearing more from our students. But first of all, just to give you a little bit of a brief overview of student life at Lund, I want to share a quick presentation. So of course, uh, Lund University is really famous for its student life and for all the different ways that you can get involved. Uh, so we have a lot of different things uh, to share in that regard and things to benefit your experience while you study at Lund. So just to give you a little idea of some of the things I'm going to touch on quite briefly, uh, of course, the main core of student life being our sort of trinity of student nations, unions, and the academic society and associations. So those are all the different types of student groups that we have, which I'm going to explain each one, because I know it can be a bit uh, confusing if you haven't uh, been here before or heard much about them. Then we'll touch really briefly on different things that you can get involved with in terms of sports and ways to keep fit, uh, cultural activities in the area, some outdoors and nature, since we live in such a really lovely uh, part of Sweden down here in the south some city life, because we of course also have uh, the third largest city and some other really interesting cities uh, in Sweden nearby. And then as I mentioned, the majority of our session today, we will uh, talk with our current students. So if you already had questions that you know you wanna ask for the current students, you can go ahead and post those in the q and I can see we have a few of them already in there. And as soon as we finish with the presentation in a few minutes, we'll get to those. But to start off, uh, to share a little bit about the actual student life at Lund outside of the classroom, the different things that you can get involved in, a lot of people would say that the real heart of student life is the student nations, which are very unique uh, organizations uh, here in Lund. There's only two universities uh, in Sweden that have student nations, with Lund, of course, being one of them. And there are 13 nations that are essentially uh, really large clubs that are completely run by students. And they put on all different kinds of activities uh, 
every, all week that you can take part in, uh, like lunches and brunches, dinners, uh, pub nights, nightclubs, different sports events. You can do baking nights, hiking trips, all kinds of different events completely run by students. Uh, and they're all, of course, student priced. So it's quite a popular way to kind of uh, have a night out or go and eat some lunch at a very reasonable price. Uh, and it's also some a way that you can get involved in to kind of get some leadership experience if you'd like, as of course, since they are student run, there's a lot of foremen who help run these different events, uh, which can be a great way to get involved and also meet other students and especially meet a lot of Swedish students. So it's very easy to join a nation. And one thing that is really special about the nation system is once you join one, you actually have access to all of the different nations. So essentially, in uh, some ways, it's... Uh, it doesn't matter too much which one you join because you can still attend activities at all of them. And the nations are spread out around Lund. So a lot of times, for example, students might choose to join the nation that's closest to them because it's convenient. Or there's also different nations that have sort of different themes. For example, one nation uh, does a lot of events specific to music and a lot of concerts. Another nation might specialize in sustainability related events. So some students choose to join a nation based on the theme. Uh, but either way, they're all around the, uh, the university and around the city. And many of them, or actually most all of them, I think, uh, also offer housing. So if you are, for example, an EU student and you don't have a housing guarantee at Lund, a lot of students choose to live at the nations, which can be even more so an encompassing experience to really meet other students and really get involved in nation life. The next aspect of uh, student life that we want to highlight is the student unions, which are also something that are really important to the university here at Lund. And a union, uh, student union is essentially uh, the same as a job union. So it's someone who's there to protect you and protect uh, your experience during your studies at Lund. So the unions uh, take part in a lot of the policy making in terms of the education, how education is run at Lund. And of course, if you ever have any kind of issue with your education, or you feel, uh, for example, something's been graded unfairly, the unions are there to represent you and uh, basically take that case up and really investigate into that. So this is also something where you can, uh, of course, only use unions when you really need them or they're kind of there in the background to help you, but you can also choose to get really involved in unions uh, and take part in the different boards uh, that make up the unions. They also all host different welcome activities for students to get you involved in campus, career fairs to get you uh, sort of connected to different opportunities after you graduate, and of course a really lovely tradition of formal balls, which you can see in the photo here, uh, which is another very special tradition at Lund. Thirdly, we have the Academic Society, which is an organization also run by students and composed of a lot of different organizations that put on particularly cultural aspects or cultural events. So within the Academic Society, you can find a lot of events uh, like different lectures from perhaps visiting uh, really people of any kind. So uh, high profile guests within academia, perhaps very famous speakers from different areas of study or politicians or ambassadors. Uh, all different kinds of folks who come to give exhibitions. We have also Scandinavia's largest student radio station, which is fun to get involved with, student theater, uh, art exhibitions, you name it. So there's a lot of different ways if you really are interested in the cultural side of Sweden especially, but of Lund, you can really get involved in the academic society. And finally, in addition to all of this, there are over 300 uh, now, this says nearly, but I believe we've actually just gone over that number, uh, student organizations uh, to get involved in. And this can be a vast variety of things. So there's uh, debate organizations or uh, cultural organizations in terms of different areas of the world. For example, the Southeast Asian Student Association, uh, religious organizations, really any kind of interest that you have, there's usually something uh, to get involved in. Uh, and and at the beginning of each year, you have an opportunity to meet all of the different student organizations and sign up for their activities at a large fair that we hold during orientation. So you can really see all in one place, all of the different ways that you can get involved and meet them. Next, I'd like to share a little bit about sports and exercise. Of course, we have a lot of students who are very interested in sports. We have someone on our panel today who's actually uh, playing in a Swedish football league. So we will definitely be sure to talk to Prince more about that in a moment. Uh, but there are a lot of different opportunities to uh, participate in sports around Lund, uh, both uh, at 
sort of official sports organizations, local sports clubs and community events, but also within the student life as well. As I mentioned, student nations and associations quite often have sports activities. There are also dozens of gyms located all around campus that you can get involved in uh, that usually have student discounts on their membership fees, as well as free outdoor gyms all around the city and community pools if you're interested in swimming. Next, I'll talk a little bit about the cultural activities in the area. So as mentioned, a lot of the student associations also organize groups for things like music, choir, uh, specs, which is a very unique thing here to Sweden, which is essentially sort of um, like comedic theater, sometimes uh, improv, but specific kind of comedy theater events uh, that are very popular. And you, of course, also have a lot of local museums and music venues. Malmo, which is the third largest city in Sweden and located very close, about 10 minutes by train from Lund, is actually considered sort of the cultural capital of Sweden. So you have a lot of different art galleries and uh, places to experience local art there in Malmo as well. So this can be a really great way to kind of get involved and keep the cultural activity alive. In terms of outdoor activities around Lund, you will find a number of different uh, ways to get involved in nature. We're very proud of the really beautiful nature we have here in Skåne and in southern Sweden. So you'll find a number of different jogging tracks and cycling tracks all throughout the city, uh, a ton of different city parks and botanical gardens, which are quite popular for students to go and study or share a picnic uh, on sunny days. We're very close to several different beaches, uh, anywhere from maybe a maybe about a 20 minute uh, bus drive away to Loma or beaches in Malmö. Of course, Helsingborg, which is where one of our uh, campuses is located, has beaches right in the middle of the city. And then if you go a little bit further out, maybe uh, 30 minutes or so, uh, uh, 30 minutes to an hour uh, by bus or by train, you'll find a lot of different opportunities for hiking, diving, rock climbing all throughout uh, the many different natural parks that we have uh, here in Skåne. And of course, there are a lot of hiking uh, opportunities close by right near the city of Lund. But if you want to go a little further out to get something, not quite a mountain, but uh, much bigger than a hill, <laughs> you need to go a bit further in Skåne. But that can be quite a fun way to spend a weekend exploring a little bit around the nature that we have here in the area. But if you're not uh, such an outdoorsy person and you want to stick a bit closer into the city, uh, that's quite all right. Because as mentioned, we have, as you can see here in this photo, uh, Sweden's third largest city, Malmö, is about 10 minutes away by train. Uh, about 30 minutes north of Lund is, of course, Helsingborg, as I just mentioned, where our third campus is located. So if you're studying public health or any of our fine and performing arts programs, uh, those will be located in Malmö. So we have, of course, uh, Prince and Nina, two of our panelists here today who study in Malmö, if anyone has questions about that. Uh, Helsingborg is where you'll find our service management programs, strategic communication, and energy efficient and environmental building design. So if you're interested in one of those programs, you'll be located in Helsingborg. All other programs are located on our Lund campus. But again, it's great to have really close access to these different international cities. Whereas, of course, Copenhagen, which is the capital of Denmark, is around 40 minutes by train from Lund. So for any time that you feel either you want to go traveling for a weekend, uh, catch a flight somewhere else in Europe, uh, or, of course, explore a whole other country, we're right on the border, essentially, to Copenhagen and Denmark. So it can be uh, really exciting to uh, join those kinds of uh, activities in another country as well. But now I want to uh, go ahead and spend the rest of our time really diving in with our current students. So that was a brief overview of some of the types of activities that you can be involved in. But I want to make sure that we dedicate the rest of our time to hearing from your experiences. So I can see we actually have quite a few folks who have joined uh, since we first introduced ourselves. So I'd love to go around again and perhaps everyone, if you could uh, introduce yourself again, what you study, where you're from, and maybe your favorite thing about being a student at Lund could be a great way to start. So why don't we uh, start with City? Uh, thank you, Audrey. Hi, everyone. I am Siddhi. I'm from India, and I'm studying my master's in cultural technology in my second year. Um, uh, the best part about Lund that I like as a student, as well as like someone who's living here, is just that the international group of students that are here. So you, you get to meet a lot of people and it's just not at nation parties. You can just like go anywhere, sit anywhere, just meet everyone. 
so you know everyone's really friendly everyone's very nice so you know it won't be hard for you to like adjust to a new cultural setting it's going to be a very easy transition fantastic thank you city beatrice Hi everyone, I'm Beatriz. Um, I'm studying the Disaster Risk Management and Climate Change Adaptation Master Program. Um, I'm originally from Spain. Um, my favorite thing about Lund, um, the campus. The campus is beautiful, and as Siri said, yeah, everything, everyone is so welcoming. It's been such a great experience uh, to move here. Um, and uh, I mean, even in the dark days that we have now, um, you find so much joy because it, um, it's been snowing, there's so many lights on, everybody's happy because uh, the holidays are coming. Um, so yes, I, it's just uh, such a beautiful town, beautiful place. And I live in Malma, so if you have questions as well about that and, and the commute, I'm happy to answer those. Wonderful, thank you so much. Laureen. Hi everyone, my name is Lorraine. I'm from France and I'm studying in the second year of Master in Social Anthropology. And I think my favorite thing about Lund uh, as a student and just as someone uh, being here in Lund is uh, how incredible it is to be able to meet so many people from so many different countries. Like it's a constant cultural exchange. Like just here in this panel, we're from different countries, also different continents. So yeah, it's. It makes the experience so much richer, I think, and I really like it. Absolutely. And Lund actually has students from around 130 countries, and about 60% of our master's students are international students. So really, I, I echo what uh, Lorraine has said, that no matter where you're from, you will find someone probably from close to home, but also many, many more people from all over the world. Excellent. Nina. Hi, I'm Nina. I'm from the US and I'm in my second year of the Masters of Public Health. My favorite thing about living in Lund and sort of Sweden in general is the Fika culture. I, before coming, I'm a big like coffee, pastry type of person. And so having that set time to sort of take a break from work, take a break from studies, like if we have two hour lectures, we'll have a 15 minute Fika break in between. And it sort of just helps you slow down and relax, rest and catch up a bit. Absolutely. And Prince. Hello, everyone. My name is Prince, and I'm from Ghana. And I'm also in my second year, just like Nina, in the Masters in Public Health program. Um, the my most favorite thing, of course, about studying here will also be the reason why I chose the university, because of the research culture here. I mean, all our lecturers are researchers as well and you have this good research environment to nurture you in terms of research everything we do we teach you also practice and for me that's just beyond what i was expecting when i wanted to study here in Lund. absolutely we have uh, so many different opportunities to get involved and i can see actually that leads really well into uh, one of the questions we have here uh, which is actually about uh, getting involved in potential uh, work during studies, uh, which could be uh, at an internship or a regular job and things. So Benedict is wondering if anyone has jobs next to their studies to cover some of the costs of accommodation uh, and how much time it consumes, approximately how much you earn and does it take up much time and do you have time to socialize next to it? So a lot of questions here in one. Uh, so perhaps actually uh, before I uh, send this to our panel, I'll say that uh, from our perspective at the university, uh, one thing that we always share is that you are allowed to work uh, as much as you want during your studies, uh, but we do always recommend uh, basically being aware that you probably won't have enough time, or I would say probably, but you definitely won't have enough time to work enough to cover your complete living expenses. So you should always, uh, if you are able to find a part-time job, consider it extra pocket money kind of on the side and have another way of funding your, your full studies. Uh, it can be a bit difficult to find work because uh, if you don't speak Swedish, of course, you're at a bit of a disadvantage. But that being said, I do know a lot of students who have part-time jobs, so perhaps I'll now open up to the panel. Is Does anyone have uh, part-time work that they're engaging in? And can you share a little bit about how much time that takes uh, and if it's manageable alongside your studies? Hi. So, uh, yes, I am working um, part-time. Uh, I'm still working with the organization that I used to work with before I uh, decided to stop working and, and going back to school. Um, 
I'm not gonna lie, it is a challenge. Uh, one of the things that I love about Lund University is how much emphasis they put about, you. if you're here, you're a student and that is your first job. And that is the first thing that you're doing. And if for me, I'm, I'm doing this investment on myself, uh, coming to, to study again. So that is where um, my focus is definitely. But uh, I knew that I needed some extra pocket money as Audrey said, uh, I had to, uh, I, I, I don't have any scholarships or anything, which I know that it, that is something that is also available. Uh, but uh, for me, I, I had to uh, save money to, to be able to make this investment, right? Um, so yes, it is possible to do it. Like I probably put in at least, I'm trying five hours uh, a week uh, on that. And mostly, you know, doing it in the evening, sometimes in the bus, because there's great Wi-Fi connection uh, in public transportation here. Um, so sometimes that is how I'm using my time, right? And so it's all about how you, you want to, what you want to prioritize, how you want to manage your time, but definitely time to socialize as well, because that is a very important part of, I think, of the life that we have here in Lund. And as everybody sh shared, uh, you know, like uh, how many opportunities there are there to, to meet uh, international students or also Swedish students and having all those cultural uh, changes. So um, I think it's important that, you know, there's a, you manage everything and it, and it is possible, but um, yeah, it is a bit of a challenge, but it is possible. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing Beatrice. And Siti, you have your hand raised. Something to share as well? Yeah, so I totally resonate with Beatrice as well. Um, I did a part-time job in Lund at a restaurant of uh, maybe like three weeks but then again uh, sometimes it depends what work time they call you for so if it clashes with the studies you might not be able to work there um apart from that again like Audrey also said uh, a lot of places you do need Swedish so uh, also it depends what sort of work you want to do if it's, it's more closer to your field then I would do recommend uh, looking at your department uh, like a lot of department I know have research positions research projects ongoing i'm not guaranteeing it but there are like i remember in my first year there weren't any but now they've suddenly opened up but you can work there you can i have a friend who has been working part-time with a company in london and now he has secured an internship and a thesis opportunity with them so uh, my advice is as soon as you come to loan you should start looking for opportunities absolutely some great tips there for sure Great. Uh, I yeah, realized maybe, actually. Maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe I can add this. Um, no, I have not been doing any part time work per se for money, but a colleague of mine started doing that. And um, it was at odd hours. He started to do it for some time, but he had to stop because it was affecting his studies. So, one thing to know that you may be able to it, for example, but you have to make sure that it doesn't affect your study because that is the number one reason why you're here. So, he had to wake up around 2 a.m and do the job until about 7 a.m. Then he had to go to school in Hesenbori. So, I mean, it was hard, so he dropped it. And I think you have to look at actually getting settled. So prepare to come here. If you get a job, then that is a bonus. But don't think that maybe finding a job will help you maybe pay your accommodation or your tuition, because that will be overreach and it's expensive, you cannot afford it. Absolutely. So it's always important to keep in mind uh, about kind of the time balance and it really will change from student to student uh, how much you can really handle on the side of your studies and, and when. So that's always something definitely to keep in mind as well. I realize something that uh, perhaps we should uh, share is in addition to make sure that everyone in the audience knows actually what are you guys involved in so that if anyone has specific questions about the activities that you've been involved in outside of your studies, then they'll be able to uh, share some questions about that. So perhaps we should also go around and, and share what uh, do you do in your free time? Are you involved in any kind of extracurriculars or anything here at Lund? Uh, so perhaps now, Prince, we'll start with you this time. Yeah, thank you. So I'm um, a member of the Network for Global Professionals. Um, this is the um, organization for students who have scholarship with the Swedish Institute. Um, so here in Lund, we have a good community. I'm also um, involved with FC Hesenkrona football team. So I play in the Swedish Sixth League. And I'm also the international officer for the Masters in Public Health program. And I'm also the ambassador for the program 
apart from the kind of southern in the university, sometimes it's confusing, but it's actually basically the same. And then I'm also an, a representative of the European University Alliance for Global Health, UGLO in, in short, and, and also a member of the Medicine Faculty Students Union. Uh, so yeah. So, it's about myself. So, it's <laughs> so it's also uh, very, very easy to get involved in things outside of just jobs to keep you busy for sure, if you're Prince. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. And Beatrice, what about you? Uh, so because of work and, and the, the full-time studies, I am not as involved as Prince, <laughs> um, but I have been uh, a member of uh, the theater group that, one of the theater groups that are there here, um, that it's in, in English, is called Lust. I met them at the fair that Audrey was mentioning that happens at the beginning of, uh, of the uh, year. Um, and, uh, and then also our program, the DRMCCA, has an association, and so I am involved with that. Um, um, in the communications department, which is my background, uh, the communications committee. Um, so those are the things that uh, I am involved in. But then uh, spending time outdoors, because as Audrey said, Scorna has so many beautiful places to to explore. And I live, as I said, in Malmo, so close to the beach. So you know, I could go and and walk and enjoy all those things. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Wonderful. Thanks, Nina. How about you? So mostly I am also a UGLO student representative with Prince. Um, I've been a mentee and a mentor for the International um, Student Mentor Group. Um, I've done choir. I've worked a lot with nations, which is super fun. And what's also really nice is because there's so many organizations, you don't have to always join and be super active, but you can go to events here and there. Um, I've been to events from the East Asian Student Association. There was like a Lindy Hop dance session uh, last week that I went to. So there's so many things to do and you don't always have to do everything with every single group, but it's fun to get a taste here and there. Absolutely, wonderful. Sidi, what do you get up to in your free time? Um, so uh, I have been exploring, learned. I love to walk around. So I have been um, just like exploring all the parks, the, uh, the nature reserves across London. But like other students also, I'm not very involved in um, a lot of things, but I was involved with the Social Sciences Student Union for a brief amount of time. Um, apart from that, like um, Nina and Beatrice also said, you know, it's it's not necessary to hang out with different sets of groups. You can just, if you're not very social, you can just like just grab a cup of coffee and just like, you know, walk around London because there's so much small things to see like the cathedral, the botanical garden. So it's just like wherever, road, whichever road you take, you'll just end up at a beautiful spot. Absolutely. And especially now with the snow, it's a lovely time, a chilly but lovely time to, to take a walk around. Great. And Lorraine? So um, I've been uh, quite involved with the student union at the social sciences faculty and also at different uh, student nation that we have here in Lund. But otherwise, I just like to pick and choose different activities that all the organization uh, offer and what I like to do. So like if it's going outdoors sometimes, going for like learning some dances some other time. But yeah, and just visiting around. It's always lovely. And with the snow, it's it's just magical. So. Absolutely. So if anyone has questions about any of the different activities, feel free to definitely drop those in the chat uh, or in the Q&A. Uh, again, a reminder that you can use the thumbs up feature if uh, someone has already posted the same question that you have, just so that we can kind of get through everything and keep it a little bit tidy here. But I can see we have a very popular question, actually the sec first and third most popular questions uh, about housing, which is always uh, an important thing to talk about. So in terms of how difficult is it and how to, did you find your housing? So I think I think I'll also share uh, just a kind of little bit of context here that housing varies a lot depending on what kind of uh, citizenship you have. So if you're a non-EU citizen in Lund, uh, you are guaranteed housing through the university, uh, through an organization called LU Accommodation, and they offer different types of housing uh, around the university. So you're not necessarily guaranteed your first choice, though quite often it's, it's first come, first serve. So some students uh, do quite often get their first choice, but not always, but you are guaranteed to have 
uh, housing of some kind. Uh, if you're an EU citizen, unfortunately, you are not uh, receiving a housing guarantee, so you do need to find housing yourself. Uh, this being based on tuition, of course, because non-EU citizens pay tuition and EU citizens don't. Uh, but there are a variety of different ways to find housing. Uh, so perhaps we could actually start with Beatrice and Lorien, since you are EU citizens here today, uh, to share how you found your housing and, and if that was very difficult for you or not. So whoever would like to start. <laughs> I'll go, Lorene, if you don't mind. Um, so I, I feel your um, nervousness and anxiety about this because I think that we, we've all been there, especially, you know, EU citizens. Um, hearing, you know, how difficult it is to, to, to get housing and some of my classmates didn't find accommodation until like maybe a couple of months ago. So yes, it is difficult, but there are options. Um, for me, um, I expanded my my search to Malmo too because I wanted uh, I knew what I wanted. I I, I I'm 36, so I knew I've been living on my own for a long time. I knew that I didn't want to or it was going to be very difficult to share uh, an, an apartment with somebody or have a room only. So again, I put that into my planning when I was uh, applying to come and, and you know planning to come to Lund and so I decided to come here to Malmo I have my tiny space which is beautiful it's a guest house next to uh, a big house where a family lives and so I made the uh, the choice that I was going to invest one hour or two hours of my day every day being in uh, in the bus and the train which public transportation works quite wonderfully here and it's very easy to use. And, and it, as I said, it has Wi-Fi. So, you know, if there's anything that you want to do while you're riding uh, a, the public transportation, it is possible. Um, but so for me, I I knew that I, I wanted to get that done as soon as possible because, you know, I had to move my whole life from the US back to Europe um, where I was living at the moment at that time. And so um, I think it was in June, uh, I started looking and being quite active. Uh, I looked mostly, I think it was called a AF um, Bostader is one of the websites, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I contacted a few, a few people. I did a couple of uh, like phone interviews kind of thing. Uh, and so for, we could meet, uh, I could meet the land people and then uh, they could meet me. Uh, some of them asked for references as well because they wanted to know what kind of you know what what was it uh, that I wanted and and how what what a, um, what type of tenant I was, um, so uh, so yes um, it was a stressful time and you know a lot of talking to my mom talking to my friends and what do you think about this option a lot of looking in Google Maps how far is it how many connections with the buses etc and also I decided finally to to move here as well because it's close to the water and in the beach as Audrey said uh, and that was also an important thing for me. Uh, but yeah, as uh, I heard when I was in these panels, uh, what people said, be very active and, uh, and you know, it is possible to do. And also the wonderful thing is that once uh, you get here as well, you can meet wonderful people as we all are saying, and then find somebody that uh, you could uh, find, look, try to look for another place with. And, and so that is uh, something actually that I'm now doing with some of my classmates so I could move to Lund maybe if it's possible, uh, just to make life a little bit easier. Um, but again, right, that that is also an option that can happen afterwards once you are here. Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that perspective, Beatrice. And Lorraine, what about you? How did you find the process of looking for your housing? Yes, so I'm going to agree with Beatrice that uh, at first you can look really impressive to also hearing that it's really difficult to find housing. But for me, it was more, of course, it was stressful, but it's about having a really good strategy and really multiplying the um, opportunities you have. So, for example, we have this really good website that Beatrice mentioned a bit, AF Postader, which is really um, completely dedicated for student housing. So there uh, you can find a lot of opportunities and there is really Really this uh, period in July, if I'm not wrong, where you as new student can apply for this and you get a higher chance to get a housing. So this is really good. Uh, I really advise you to uh, look uh, that way. That's what I did. I, I applied to uh, that, uh, that place. Uh, it has been quite long for me to find a housing through AF Postader. So in the meantime, I could find a housing with a private landlord here in Lund because it's also important that you uh, keep in mind your own um, your own needs. So for example, I'm 22 and uh, arriving in a new country, I prefer to be living with other people. So having a share housing or something that's called a corridor. Uh, so yes, I uh, decided to focus in Lund. 
I didn't look in in Malmo for uh, for my parts, but uh, yeah, I decided to uh, look at different shared housing that I could find. Uh, so yes, I had this uh, possibility of looking on this platform. I think you can find it in the link that Audrey sent. It's called Bopulen, and it's a lot of private land road and land ladies that post uh, like rooms or full apartment depending on your needs, and you can just contact them and see how it goes. Uh, but yes, really being uh, proactive and looking as many ways as possible. And, um, yeah. Oh, I muted myself. Uh, absolutely. And that's our biggest advice as well at the university is if you don't have a housing guarantee, of course, to start looking as soon as you're admitted, essentially. And I would say pretty much all of the time, as long as you start being proactive and looking early, uh, it might be a bit stressful, but you won't have a problem in the end. You will find something. Uh, we also always recommend students to take the first offer that they get because it's much easier once you're here to look around and decide to to find something else maybe after the first semester and move maybe you meet a friend that you'd like to move in with but it's always better just to to accept an offer when you have it uh, and then take a look at other things here if you decide you'd like um, and of course as Beatrice has mentioned there are other cities around uh, that you can live in that are quite close with public transport uh, but one thing I would like to uh, maybe then ask our non-EU citizens, so did all three of you take the housing guarantee and live with LU accommodation, or did anyone also find uh, housing privately? Everyone has not in <laughs> tell you accommodation. So uh, perhaps if anyone would like to share briefly about their experience with that, are you living in a corridor or an apartment, uh, uh, that kind of thing. And and actually part of one of the questions we have here is, does it matter where you live for the quality of your student life? So maybe if anyone would like to speak about that a bit, if you live further uh, on the edge of Lund or in the center, et cetera. Um, yeah, I can begin. So because um, I had a guarantee by the university so I uh, because I had to list five preferences of mine so I got a I got my second preference and it was a studio apartment and it was like way south of Lund and like two and a half kilometers from my own department um I it was fine with me because uh for, uh, for me I wouldn't want to share an apartment with someone but I can share a corridor room so that was different but um so I was staying in a studio apartment called cluster garden and the the location is excellent i had the best room luckily because i had amazing views of both the summer and the winter months um but also it depends if you want people around you then that like a studio apartment might not be the best for you so it got uh way too lonely for me way too fast but i did stay there for one year there were a lot of uh, people from my country also in the same building so we used to do we used to hang out but I guess I more, needed more exposure. So then, like, as Lorraine also mentioned, that I shifted to an AF for standard corridor room, like, very recently in the summer. And now I'm living with 10 more people. And we share this. We share. A, I have my own room and my own closet and bathroom, but I do share a common room in the kitchen. It's, it's really fun. Uh, so, I mean, that's a very different experience for me from a studio apartment. Absolutely. And very different uh, ways. I think that's always something to highlight when you're looking for, for housing is to really think for yourself kind of what what style of housing is really the best fit for you? As Siddi mentioned, do you really want to live alone or have the, the exposure to other students and maybe make more friends in a corridor room, et cetera? I know we have a question here, kind of, I'm trying to tie all the housing questions in together. We have someone also wondering about the rent fees. So that will vary a lot depending on these different uh, housing types. So corridor rooms are typically a lot cheaper than studio apartments, et cetera. Um, but Prince or Nina, I think, I think actually it would be interesting to hear from you as well, your perspective of choosing to live in Lund versus Malma uh, when studying in Malma, for example. So I think Prince, you live in Malma and Nina, you live in Lund, right? So maybe if you could each share your decision process behind that choice. So um, I've been studying for a long time. Um, and I Nana lived uh, with four, uh, two, three other students. So um, I've had this um, interaction with students, so I, I decided to go for a studio apartment where I will live alone and also wanted to live here at Mamo because the public health program is also in Mamo. And at that time, I didn't actually know how close it was, but on high, in hindsight, it is one of the best decisions I made because very close to Copenhagen. So almost every other week, I, I would just go to Copenhagen to, to visit my family there. So for me, having a place to myself, and then having the option to 
go out to meet friends in Mamo, go out to activities, uh, was what I was looking for. And I like quiet. And sometimes I also like the noise, but I don't like it all the time. So that is why I chose to have a studio apartment. And usually when you're applying for the accommodation, you have to state the reason if you have maybe any other comments and stuff like that. So I told them that um, studying here in Mamo, of course. So that is why I wanted to be closer to the university. And then just about 15 minutes walk from here. So I just walk and go, even though I use a bike as well. So sometimes I can be, I can wait till 10 minutes to time, then I hop on the bike, then I bike to, to campus. And there's no traffic here. Of course, it is, people will tell you that um, there's traffic. There is no traffic. I mean, people from Africa will agree with me. So that's why I chose, yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you. And Nina, you chose to live in Lund, right? So can you share about that choice? Yeah. So I knew I wanted to be more involved in student life and be closer to like other students. I'm currently living in a quarter with nine other people, similar to like what City said. Uh, I share a kitchen and a living room, but I have my own room and bathroom. And so it's really nice that you kind of have a default social circle, people that you can get to know first um, and do activities with. Um, but I also really wanted to live close to the train station. So I live right next to the train station and it's super easy to just walk out, hop on a train and get to class. I think another thing I was looking for was proximity to like a grocery store or other activities that I might be looking for. So just a couple of things to keep in mind, like when you're looking for an apartment or looking for an accommodation, what is it that you want to be close to? Public transport, groceries, other resources. So yeah. Absolutely. Some great points there as well. Uh, so I would refer everyone to the link that I've put in the chat there where you can read a lot more about housing, about the different options. Uh, you can see kind of the range. I see that's a question we have here uh, in terms of fees uh, for housing and things like that. Uh, we have someone who maybe joined a bit late here who's wondering in general about if the university provides housing. So there you can read more about everything we've just talked about a bit in terms of the housing guarantee for non-EU students, uh, etc. Uh, I have the next couple questions here um, are a bit about uh, the complete scholarship. So I'm going to put in the chat here the link to the scholarships page so that uh, we don't really have time and it's not really the forum to go deep into the scholarships. Uh, but we actually have a few questions specifically about the SI scholarship. So I do want to uh, give Prince the chance to speak a bit about that as Prince is one of our SI scholars. Uh, so there is a sort of complete scholarship depending on which country you're from that you can apply for, which is the SI scholarship. So perhaps Prince, you can share a bit about your perspective uh, being an SI student. Yeah, um, thank you. And without the SI scholarship, I wouldn't be here because it's very expensive if we convert it to my currency, the Ghana city, which is not doing well to the dollar now. It, you can't, I mean. So the SI scholarship is for people from different countries. So you go to the scholarship uh, link as Audrey has posted on, and then you said for your country, if you're eligible, you know what to do. And my advice is that you just go and you do as they say, every letter counts, and then you apply. And you, you get uh, your tuition is paid, you get a stipend to pay your rent, and also to take care of yourself. And also your flight ticket is also paid for which is good. So just put effort into that if you want to get the SI scholarship. But I think which opinions in, in February, uh, between 10th and 18th, I guess. But yeah, if you have questions, you can just click on the link and go and ask them specifically about that. And we have various communities in every university because it's not only for Lund University. So we have various communities, but in Lund, we have the highest um, scholars here uh, in Sweden. And we have a great community. We we meet, we travel around to parks, museum, have fun games, uh, support one another, have events that support career path, um, managing stress, anxiety, the whole 10 yards, everything is in there. So I will, I will say go for it if you want to be an ISA scholar. And they also have a very great support system for students as well. Uh, with other uh, webinars that they organize with, for example, the Swedish Parliament, the police, the insurance company, and among others. 
Absolutely. So again, uh, take a look in the link there to learn a little bit more. Uh, quite a lot of questions now in here about the SI scholarship. Uh, as Prince mentioned, it does cover your accommodation, but you uh, still find the accommodation yourself. Uh, they don't find it for you, but otherwise, uh, take a look uh, at the link to find out a bit more. We have another question here about the average cost of living in general. So I've put a link there in the chat where you can see kind of a breakdown of cost of living. I'm sure most of the students here with us would agree that it depends a little bit on your lifestyle, of course, as well. But maybe does anyone have any tips they'd like to share about kind of living in Lund on a budget or ways that you kind of save money uh, around town? Uh, any kind of tips that you would share for our, our team? City. Hi. So, um, like I said, I was staying at a studio apartment before and that the rent was very high. But one way I found around that was um, I sort of registered my uh, membership across the various supermarkets in Lund. So, you know, I would uh, get weekly offers and discounts on a lot of products and a lot of uh, groceries. So then, you know, I would plan my week accordingly or I would just uh, go and buy uh, groceries in bulk that I knew wouldn't perish. Uh, one is that then you have a lot of um, like student apps that you can download and they have a lot of uh, discounts on various stores like H&M and other um, like, uh, like other stores if you want. Third option that I would I was I took advantage of was secondhand stores in Lund and uh, as well as Malmo. So uh, you get a lot of if you have to furnish your apartment or if you want, if you want to buy like even like gifting items, they I mean I say secondhand shop, but they are in excellent quality products. So you can take advantage of those as well. Absolutely. A lot of great tips there. Thank you. Lorraine, I think you had your hand next. Yes. I agree with all the uh, good tips that City just gave us. Uh, I just wanted to add my kind of favorite tip uh, for uh, money saving, but also for like ecology and uh, like making your, making your life more um, ecology friendly and earth friendly. Uh, there's a few apps that you can find uh, for food saving. It's either association for food saving or you can find some apps uh, for food saving. So for example, you have one called uh, Too Good To Go. You have another one called Karma. And basically on those apps, uh, each store or sometimes even restaurants are gonna uh, post uh, what they have and is, food that is going to turn bad in like a few days, for example. So they cannot sell it anymore, but you can buy it for way cheaper, sometimes half price. And then it saves your, bu your budget and it also saves this food that would all otherwise be wasted. So I really recommend to use these little apps. And sometimes also um, surprise baskets. They put a, a few items in it and you, you buy one and then you go home and you discover what you're going to have for dinner and it's always also super exciting. So Absolutely. And a really great way to really engage uh, with the sustainability that is so important to Sweden here. All of, all of these tips for sure as well. And Prince. Yeah, so um, just um, to begin from where um, Lauren left off, I used to go to go a lot and um, it's surprising how much you can get for so little. So I'll say that you use the app, which is really, really good to, to have. One thing, other thing you can also do is to get some of the student cards, whether student quartet card or the mercenat card. And then there are a lot of discounts that you can have. I always buy with discounts. So I also register with, with most of the shops. So when there's discounts, I know that there's discounts. And I'm also working by in Triangle, for example, and just looking at the stores and then surprisingly there's 75 percent discount and i know i don't need it right now but i'll need it in the winter then I'll, I'll buy it and even though they are discounted they are of the same high quality as if they were not discounted so don't be fooled by the prices that it has dropped and therefore it is uh, going bad no it's it's okay so i always buy when there's discount so even the phone that I'm using, I got a discount from, from um, using the student app and like 52% discount, that's huge. So always look up for the discounts. And of course, I also go to the Asian markets and to buy food. Always also good to buy in bulk. And then you can also save money because nowadays you don't know, before you know it, something's just up. So you buy in bulk and then you also cook in bulk. So usually you can send food to campus and eat. So you don't need to buy. 
But even if you do need to buy on campus, you, you can use your LU card to get a discount in the cafes to buy. And then if you are also in the student nations, because you are a student, uh, you, if you hold a student card, quoted card, you can also get discount for students, which is also a great way to, to spend. So these are some of the budget tips that I will give to you. And it's really nice. You probably will not even feel that you are being on the budget because you get good quality food, good quality products for, for much cheaper. Absolutely. Some great tips there. And most uh, most of the study buildings do have sort of a microwave room where you can bring your own food and, and warm things up, as Prince mentioned. So it's a great way also to save from needing to buy lunch every day, for sure. Uh, so we have, uh, let's see, uh, I know someone I think joined a bit late and asked about jobs, uh, which we've already talked about a bit. So, but I've put a link there for you in the chat so you can take a look there. I want to also briefly mention we have a webinar coming up just after this one in around an hour from now, specifically about uh, jobs, research, internships, and study abroad. So feel free to jump in and join that session as well to hear more about some of those topics. Uh, but we have a great question here. It's been upvoted seven times that I'd love to ask everyone about what advice would you give to new students? to ensure they don't get overwhelmed in their first few weeks. Of course, something that is always a worry when you're moving abroad and something that I'm sure everyone experiences at some point. Uh, so what advice would you share to, to help kind of make that transition? Uh, I, I guess I'll also leave this open for anyone who feels yes. that they'd like to so, take it. Um, the global first year. And um, we just, last, yesterday we just had um, an evaluation of our mentor group uh, with our uh, mentees. And one of the things that they told us really helped them to integrate and not feel overwhelmed was um, a program we had before they came to campus. We call it an icebreaking figure to talk to them about what it is. Of course, the international, there's always sends emails to students, but usually when they hear from students, they usually are much calmer and also listen from experience. So I would join one of the mentor groups. If you've already not joined, you can reach out to them and then they can add you to one of the mentor groups. And then you can get first hand information as to how to um, summon the challenges that you may face. Because this is a new environment, so there may be challenges. So getting to know what these challenges are and how uh, students here already um, solve those problems would be a very good opportunity for you. So I think that is something that I wish that I had. But for me, because I had my family in Denmark, I was able to stay with them for two weeks and get acclimatized. I came with them to the university. So it was quite smooth for me. So if you're not having family here in Sweden or near the Scandinavian region, then I think it is a must be place for you is to be a mentee. So go for that. Absolutely. Great advice there. Anyone else would like to share their best advice for adjusting, Laureen? Yes, I completely agree with Prince. Being part of the mentor program is, is really great. I was a mentee, just mentee myself, and it was really helpful to get to understand better how to go around in Sweden and like get adjusted also to the uh, cultural shock that can happen uh, as well. Uh, for me, what I like to do is that when I arrived, I tried to arrive uh, like few weeks before everything started uh, at the university. So then I could take some time to just go around the town and visit, but also see how everything functions. So going the first time to campus without the stress of having a class afterwards, just going there and seeing how is the building? How do I enter? Uh, where is the library? Where is the, the closest coffee as well? And uh, same for the rest of the city. So going to the train station or to the grocery uh, and just without the stress of, I need to do everything like in that time frame or I'm gonna be late, just discovering and allowing you to say, the, Allow, sorry, allowing yourself the time to discover slow, slowly and see how everything functions in Sweden. Absolutely, for sure. Sidi? So it's completely normal to get overwhelmed. I mean, we, uh, we are international students. We are coming from a different culture altogether. So I would understand that. But like uh, Lorreen also said that, you know, she took time. She came a few weeks early. She got to know the people around her accommodation, around her study buildings. Um, one thing I would add, want to add is like Lund University hosts orientation weeks. So I would suggest be a part of those. You get to meet new people either from your class or from other nationalities. So, you know, you get to make friends first and then you also get to know what kind of activities you might be interested 
it in the future. And so you can then join the different societies at the university as well. Um, one thing that I would recommend is like, because the same thing happened with me when I came here. I got eased into the culture. It wasn't a very big culture shock for me, but uh, for us, the, the autumn turned into winter like very soon. So we didn't have very uh, like a lot of time. And I guess we were a lot of uh, like, little bit unprepared for the winter and the darkness that was soon to follow. So I would suggest, suggest um, just, you know, speak to someone who has been living there before and how you can adapt to the gradual change instead of a very quick and a sudden change. Absolutely. Some great tips there. And I see actually somebody had asked about orientation week. So I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Siddhi. So I've put a link in the chat again to the orientation uh, where you can read more about the schedule and the different things that uh, are, are done to kind of help you ease in that transition as well. And Nina, something to share some advice? Yeah. So this might come from a little bit more of a health perspective, but like knowing what helps you relax. And like, I have a, a literal Google document of a list of things that I know calm me down or make me feel better. So either talking to a friend and like actively planning to do those things to help, uh, like Sid had mentioned a little bit, not to overwhelm yourself too much, like gradually making sure you're working on your mental health um, in terms of not being overwhelmed socially. As an introvert, I felt like the first couple of weeks was like you feel such obligations or you can feel obligations to go to all these social activities all the time, every single day, especially when you're first uh, arriving. Um, but one thing I found that was super helpful was to at least plan one activity um, ahead of time and then bring one friend. So you don't feel too overwhelmed. You have one person you know you can talk to um, and you can mentally and emotionally prepare uh, to socialize on that day. Um, but I really think like making sure you know how to take care of your mental health during the first couple of weeks and either calling home or checking in with friends, having those set into your um, daily schedule was really helpful. Absolutely. All some really wonderful advice here. Wow. It is. Yeah, I cannot agree more with Nina. That is so important. And I was thinking as well, right? Like create your, your lists of things that um, you need to do before you're coming here. Like I, I, I was just looking at my uh, notepad where I, I had a, a tab that said, we are going to Lund. And I have my list of things that I needed to do before I got there, when I got here. Um, and so I, I think that for me also that helped me a lot, like organize myself and knowing where it, what it was that I needed to get done. And don't, and in that way, you're breaking it down into pieces and it doesn't all come to you at once and it feels so massive. Uh, because yes, as international students, there are many things that we need to do. But as uh, uh, it was also mentioned, uh, orientation weeks are there to help us and the international desk is so helpful and they are all so willing to, to um, help you in any way that they can, because they also understand uh, all this stress that this can cause. Um, so there's a lot of support. Um, so remember that, that you know, you are not alone in this. Uh, and as Nina said, definitely take care of your mental health. And, and as one of my friends says, you know, like have your toolbox of things, right, that, that you know are going to help you. And talking to friends uh, in, your, in your home, through family, um, crying and shouting sometimes helps as well, or, you know, going running. And there are a lot of options, as, as we mentioned, to, to do things like that and be outside. Um, and as um, Siri was also mentioning, I wanted to talk about, right, that transition between summer and, and winter and, and having less uh, hours of sun. Uh, like for me, I'm really enjoying it. I saw that there was also a question I was uh, trying to type it before this, I think from Susana. But like uh, in winter, there are also a lot of activities. Uh, I was uh, going to Wormlands for one of the nations to do uh, movie nights that, that they, they do and they bring hot chocolate and, and popcorn and, you know, they will just gather with other people that maybe you don't see every day and that is fun. Um, but also one of the things that I love is, you know, how everybody embraces the candles uh, during the darkness. Uh, and, and that is something that I'm loving and I'm, um, I'm really embracing uh, as well as with the fika and getting together inside. Uh, and uh, for those who are scared of the cold, don't be. Uh, it's all about layers. I love one of the sayings that says that they say in here, there's not bad weather, there's only bad clothing. Uh, one of the uh, first, uh, the first time that I met um, 
the dean of the uh, faculty of engineering uh, uh she came soaked uh, uh because it was raining in in the summer <laughs> and 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 she was like well this is this is the the weather here and we just take it all on and then so it is beautiful to see kids that are right now uh outside playing all the time if it rains if it snows because they are ready with all their their winter gear so yeah don't be afraid like right now i'm learning uh the difference between being in zero degrees or like minus degrees and i know even the type of gloves that i need at that time if i'm gonna need a hat or not if and it is incredible what your body can adjust to so uh yes don't be afraid of the cold nor the darkness and remember to take your vitamin d as soon as you get here <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of great advice there. So the winter is definitely something that I think a lot of students uh, are a bit worried about. But I think, as, you, as you've said, if you kind of mentally prepare yourself for it a bit, uh, then it can be quite manageable. And Prince? Yes, sorry. I just want to add something um, based on what uh, Beatrice and, and Nina said. So one of the things that I used to do back in Ghana was to play football almost every day. So that was when I got here during the orientation week, I wanted to find out where could I play football. And so I play football in Lund, even though I'm here in Mamo, and I'm happy to to make a trip because I have made friends there, and that's also very good support. And uh, during the weekdays or even during the weekends, I'm also looking forward to going to church because that's a very good community that I've also found. And they are either PhD students or master students or they are workers, so. They, they understand um, the stresses that comes to student life. They've been there before. So they know be going through your particular circumstances, but there's a lot of support that they can give to you. And as Audrey also mentioned, we have almost every country, you were bound to find somebody from your country also here. And I think that's also one way to also easily get integrated into the societies, get to know how people from your own country, your own region actually adapted to living in Sweden. And that is a good way. So me, for me, when it is in the winter, I don't care what they say the temperature is. I go with everything that I may ever need because this is Scandinavia. They tell you it's going to be five degrees and it feels like it's minus six. And sometimes it is even minus two, but you don't, like this Saturday I was playing football, it was minus two, but I didn't feel that cold. But last two weeks it was two and I felt so cold, even though it was two. So you can see that sometimes they tell you that there's going to be the weather. So always prepare. So put it in your bag. You may not need it, but it's good to have it and not need it, but than to need it and not have it. I had a very terrible experience when I went to, to Copenhagen and I did not pack and it rained all day. And so you don't want to be caught in that. So please always over prepare than not being prepared at all. Absolutely. And I want to actually stay with you, Prince, for a moment, because I think uh, there's a question here that ties in uh, very well to what you mentioned in terms of staying connected to, to students from home and from around the world. So Judy is wondering uh, specifically for Ghanaian students, if there's a group connecting Ghanaian students, or perhaps also if you, you've been able to meet a lot of students from home, uh, and if you could share a bit about that. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, most Ghanaian students are in Lund. <laughs> other than in Mamo. Um, so there's a lot of Ghanaian community in, in Lund. Of course, there's also the Ghana um, Swedish uh, Association, which have branches across the, the regions. So you can have a very good community of people who are students and who are not. But we don't actually have um, an association for students alone for Ghana. Uh, it is something that I even thought about, I mean, during these, uh, invasion of Ukraine. It was something that I was talking, thinking about really loud. And so right now we also have a, an association of African students. It's a good way to talk to people. But as I said, um, when you go to church or uh, you walk around, you see a lot of Ghanaians already here who are ready to support you in that regard. And the best thing to do is also to register with the uh, embassy so that any information they can also give to you. So. I'm sure this will, not, it will never happen. Like we were sure Russia will never attack Ukraine, but it did. But it's always good to prepare. So just register with the embassy and uh, register with the association for um, Ghanaian communities in, in Sweden. Um, get involved. I mean, we, but we don't actually have an organization for Ghanaians. But maybe, maybe you can, we could begin that. 
<laughs> Great, thanks. We have a lot of questions here that I want to make sure we get to because it's been coming up over and over about, of course, speaking Swedish, a uh, very common question that a lot of students have. Uh, so kind of in general, perhaps, uh, if, any, if anyone would like to share, uh, have you been learning Swedish or do you feel it's vital to speak Swedish in order to kind of get by in society here? Uh, if you are learning Swedish, why have you chosen to learn Swedish? And if you aren't learning Swedish, why have you chosen not to, perhaps? <laughs> so we have a kind of a lot here that we could unpack, but Lauren, we can start with you. Yes, so uh, beginning of uh, January this year, I started uh, the Swedish course, Swedish course called SFE, which is basically Swedish for immigrants. So it's a course that uh, every city in Sweden is uh, uh, offering for free to immigrants. So students that immigrate to Sweden for studies, you are allowed to uh, uh, to apply to this course. Uh, just uh, my best tip is to um, uh, apply to it quite early because there is kind of a queue time before you can actually access the course. So I applied last, uh, like in September a year ago, and then I could start the course in January. And it was really nice to uh, get to learn some Swedish. For me, it was not at all because I required it to live in Sweden. I feel like uh, I've always, um, when I'm around town and I need to to ask question, I can always go with with English and same with the university and with other students, uh, with Swedish, Swedish students, they're always uh, really open to switch into English for us. So it's really not gonna block you in any way uh, when you go around in everyday life. For me, it was more of a way to um, understand better the culture by going through the language. So yeah, it's it's really nice to uh, learn Swedish. It's add to your experience of Sweden, but it's absolutely not mandatory if you want to just go around the city. Absolutely. I don't honestly know, remember who raised their hand next, but perhaps the uh, city will start with you. <laughs> um, so uh, like Lorreen said that it's best that you register for the SFE classes as soon as you get your personal number and when you arrive in Sweden. So I haven't been learning Swedish that much like through the SFE classes because I don't want to settle in Sweden because my course does not like, I mean, it's going to take me a long time, like four or five years of learning Swedish, Swedish so that I can get a job over here. But I do have a friend who did uh, learn Swedish for two years and now he's got a PhD position in Sweden. So, uh, uh, I mean, that's just one experience that I want to share with you. Uh, apart from that, if it's taking time for you to go to SFA classes, I would suggest making like Swedish friends. Like I have a lot of corridor mates who are Swedish. So, you know, when we hang out in the common or in the, in the kitchen or the living room, like, you know, try to teach me some words here and there. So, you know, it's just the experience that you have. Absolutely. It's, it can all uh, vary depending kind of on what you're looking for, for sure. Uh, Beatrice. Yeah, I agree with uh, what has already been said. I'm going to be taking uh, a class in at university next semester, um, and I'm very excited about that because every time I, I talk to anyone here that I know they are Swedish, I always start like, I am so sorry I don't speak your language yet. I'm going to do it <laughs> um, because, you know, at least um, just to have, uh, not to... Um, assume right that everybody's going to speak English which they do most almost everyone speaks perfect English which blows my mind and I love um, but I also want to make sure that you know like they know that I appreciate that I'm here in this country and 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 uh, that I want to learn their 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 language uh, I do know taxamic it uh, thank you very much <laughs> hey though bye bye hey Hi, and so you know, I'm. I know that it is. It's just so interesting to think now about learning another language because I'm feeling so shy, like when I did when I first started to learn English. Which uh, I know it's gonna make it a bit challenging because all the sounds are a bit so different to what I'm used to. But again, it, it's gonna depend right on what you want to get out of your experience here, and also what CD said, depending on if, is, if it's something that you want to do because you want to stay here. Uh, but, you know, uh, definitely not needed. And, uh, but I think it's it's one of the beautiful things as well about being here. And I, and I remember in one of the webinars uh, that I attended last year, 
uh, before I came here, uh, I don't know who it was, but he said, you know, we will be so happy that you learn Swedish because it's a bit of a dying language. And I think it's just so beautiful with all the different uh, vowels that are just so com so different than what I'm used to as well. So I don't know, uh, it's, uh, it's something, you know, uh, that it always enriches um, our experience, our background. So um, yeah, I, I would, I would, I would say that, you know, it's something that definitely you should look into. <laughs> Definitely. Prince. Yeah, so um, I was so hyped to study Swedish. And I think one of the best apps to also use um, Duolingo. You can use Duolingo even right now if you want to study Swedish. It's, it's a good start. And of course, you can even, the higher you go, the better you become. I, I can write letters now in Swedish, right? But I stopped studying the SFE because I um, got to a point I was so engaged. <laughs> in Uglo and I also traveled around. So, and I also had my exams to read and 300 pages of the part to also read an exam. So I put a stop to the SFP, but I'll go back again, um, hopefully next semester to study the Swedish. So it is it is a good language to, to learn. And also as um, Lauren said, to get to know the culture is very important, but you don't have to learn Swedish if you don't. And, you can get positions because there are a lot of international organizations around which you don't need to speak Swedish to, to get. You need only uh, to speak English. But the more languages you speak, the better you can interact with, with others. And the easier it is also for you to pick up other languages. So if you want to learn Swedish, I would say go for it. But nobody's going to. I mean, I went somewhere, I don't want to mention the country's name. And literally, when I asked which bus to take, they couldn't tell me. But in Sweden, everybody will tell you. And even if they get trained from Copenhagen um, airport and you come in, they'll tell you in English, in Swedish. So it's okay. You can live 100 years in Sweden without speaking Swedish. But it's good also if you learn how to speak Swedish. Absolutely. A lot of great advice there. I've also put a link in the chat uh, to where you can find more resources for learning Swedish. You can read more about SFE and different apps and things there as well. Um, we have about 15 minutes left, so I'm going to try to kind of rapid fire through uh, the remaining questions we have. I see someone's wondering about life at Campus Helsingborg. Unfortunately, none of the students that are here today study at Campus Helsingborg, uh, but I'm going to also put a link in the chat to where you can actually talk with both actually all of the students who are here today. So if after the session you have more questions, you'd like to talk to someone directly you can actually message uh, our students here directly. But we also have several students who do study at Campus Helsingborg uh, on the link there that you could message and ask a little bit more about that. Again, anyone who studies service management, strategic communication, or environmental building design. There's also some blogs that have been written about Campus Helsingborg that can uh, be interesting. Uh, kind of the second and third part of the, the top of the question we have here. First, is it possible to rent a car and go traveling in Sweden? I mean, of course, that's possible if you have a driver's license. I don't know if anyone here has done that. Uh, if you have, you can share, Lauren. <laughs> um, okay, Lauren, go. <laughs> okay, yes, um, yeah, actually, a little, a little uh, fun story for some friends. We rented a car uh, and we actually rented it in Malmö. And then we decided to go to Denmark. Uh, so we did a little road trip uh, in different cities in Denmark. It's really nice since we're so close to the border, you can easily uh, go travel for a weekend in Denmark. And uh, so that's actually a good thing here. So as soon as long as you have a driver license, you can rent a car. And the good thing about Scandinavia is that usually um, the renting uh, companies um, if you rent if you take the car in uh, in Scandinavia you can basically cross the borders if I remember correctly so they, it's still also really nice I feel to do a little trip uh, to Denmark for example and like, uh, cities around. Absolutely. City? Um, yeah so it's um, completely uh, normal to rent a car um, for us, like because I was in India, I was, I'm from India, and my license works for one year. And after one year, you have to apply for a Swedish license or like an international license. But also, I would want to say that because we drove, like a four of us drove from Dunch to Gothenburg, and renting a car is actually not very cheap. It's actually very expensive, and plus you need to pay for the fuel prices as well. And then once you give the car, like you uh, like give the car back, you have to uh, make sure that the like the fuel tank is full. 
So, you know, it's just the additional cost. So, uh, but I would just suggest take the trains and the public transport. Those are the best because you get the best views as well. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I actually want to jump then straight into a question about public transport, which is uh, a lot of people wondering about uh, if public transport is expensive, if it's possible to get a monthly subscription, uh, and do you use it to travel around town or do you bike or walk? So a lot of things to unpack there as well. So uh, let's see, Lorraine, you have your hand up. <laughs> Yes, sorry, I also wanted to jump in on what Sid uh, said about the public transport to for travel purpose for uh, going on a on journey with your friends, for example. Uh, so transport here in Sweden, train buses are really good, so it's it's really nice to take. Um, it's also there is this thing called uh, interrail, which works. Uh, within Europe, so you have the possibility to buy uh, basically a ticket for a few days, and then you can take as many trips as you want uh, throughout Europe. So if you want to take a little trip, um, but uh, yes, for uh, using public transportation more uh, to go around in Lund, I don't use it that of, don't use them that often when I'm in Lund. I prefer to bike, but you can completely go around with the buses. They're really really good. Absolutely. Nina. Yeah, I because my campus is in Malmo, I do have to buy a monthly ticket to go to class every single day. Um, there's also a 1030 ticket, which gives you 10 um, 24 hour tickets within the span of 30 days that you buy it. So there's lots of different options. Um, I would also say that uh, biking is super accessible within Lund and there was one more point I was going to make about public transportation. I would even uh, add on to that. If you if you're in Malmo, you have uh, as well city bikes that you can rent around uh, for about two hundred or so crowns for the year, which is about twenty euros, and you can actually have access to rent bikes to go all throughout Malmo. There's a station basically everywhere you can throw a rock. <laughs> One other thing about public transportation, if you are going on like a day trip with some friends, if you buy your tickets together, you can get cheaper tickets. So as long as you're going to be sticking together the whole day, that can be a really cheap way to get around uh, Skåne in general. Absolutely. Definitely take advantage of those group discounts and student discounts as you get 25% off the public transport as a student as well. Prince? Yes. So I also wanted to add um, that um, Walking is also good. You could probably walk to where you're going to because many places are re really, really accessible. And you can also borrow tickets. So <laughs> I've been borrowing tickets lately, a lot, almost every day. But when I do travel to Denmark, um, I use the same uh, Skona Trafficking, the app, to travel to Denmark. And then when I'm coming from Denmark, I buy the ticket with the same app. And then I also travel to to uh, Malmo, so you don't actually uh, have a problem with transportation and they drive well. I mean, they drive well. I've been to places, oh my God, Nina, Nina is laughing because she was in that bus. It's not good, but the driving here is really good. And one thing about uh, the driving culture here in Sweden is that they wait for you to pass as a pedestrian. So everything will stop for you to pass, but don't try that in Ghana. <laughs> Great tips there as well, friends. Thank you. Siddi? Um, so uh, if you're wondering, because I have the monthly pass, I I like to bike in India, but over here, the 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 structure of the city is like you have like uphills and downhills. So I don't think I have that much stamina, but I do take the monthly pass. It's a little bit expensive, but then I try to uh, adjust my monthly budget accordingly. Um, one other thing is because I had a friend or like a, a classmate as well who was earlier staying in Malmo. So she used to bike and she used to get her bike in the train and get off at the Lund Center station and then like bike to the department as well. So you can do that as well, whether if you're in Lund or in Malmo. So you can do that as well. Absolutely. And now we are closing down to the last uh, 10 minutes or so here, but uh, another question that I see has come up a few times. First, uh, really related to kind of culture shock and your, your experience coming from a different country to Sweden. Uh, so one student has asked, what was your biggest kind of culture shock moment when you arrived? But I also want to tie that into Sasha's question. Sasha says she notices that we are only international students in the panel today and are the Swedes shy? Um, well, Swedes can be a bit shy in some ways, but I would say actually for, for our purpose here today, we're all international students because we 
the we hosting this event are the international recruitment office so we work mainly with international students although we of course have uh swedes in all of our english taught programs as well so perhaps actually if everyone kind of pick which of those questions you want to answer maybe first we'll start with a culture shock moment but then i also want to hear uh kind of what is it like for you studying in an international environment in which you have swedes and people from all over the world all together but first any culture shocks anyone would like to share and we have to be a bit quick now because we're nearing the end but uh city yeah so for like coming from india it's that's what i've been told you know you, you could adjust to a new society like new people you know because the whole system of europe and asia is very different uh i did the only culture shock i would rather say or i, I didn't experience it because i was I aware of it because like over here uh, it depends which side of the road you walk or you bike on. Plus, the system of filling water is the same. You can go to the bathroom and just fill your bottle from the tap that way as well. Because in India, we have filtered water. So uh, uh, you will find little, little cultural shocks, not major shocks. So I would say, but it's very easy. Coming to the point about Swedish people, I would say they are a little bit shy. But it's very easy to make friends with them. So it's it's not going to be a problem. Absolutely. And I know we actually had a question about that, about the safety of the drinking water in the chat earlier. I replied in text, but it is completely safe to drink the water in Sweden. Um, I, I was also a bit shocked to, to fill up a water bottle uh, in the in this bathroom sink the first time I came to Sweden. But now, uh, after five years of living in Sweden myself, I find that even when I travel sometimes to, I won't name any names, but other European countries where the water is also completely safe to drink, I find it doesn't taste as good as it does in Sweden. We have both very safe and very good tasting water for sure. <laughs> But yes, uh, Beatrice. I agree with that statement. The water here is yeah, so tasty. <laughs> Cheers. Um, and um, so for the cultural shocks, I would say that only positive ones, uh, because everything, everyone seems so welcoming. And I think that maybe, you know, we are in a bit of a bubble because we are in Lund university. And as I said, uh, they are always um, helping us a lot being international students. Uh, but you know how everything works so well. Um, like for me, the biking, for example, um, it blows my mind how many people cycle here and they have the cargo bikes where they take their children to school and the children are also going on bikes. I was shocked seeing kids, like maybe 10 year olds taking the public transportation on their own. And just uh, somebody was asking about the safety of Lund and Sweden. And that for me, it's a, uh, like the biggest uh, example uh, that says that this uh, country is very safe. Um, and uh, regarding the treaties and internationals, like in my class, we have, I have um, in my program one suite, uh, and then other uh, students from uh, Sweden are also joining some of the classes. And yes, um, you know, we go into our pockets, uh, the suites with the suites and the international with internationals, but uh, we have been working on uh, group works together and it's just so refreshing as well to have them because they are also explaining so much about the culture. And like, for example, uh, a couple of days ago, it was Santa Lucia, uh, where they do the celebration to bring light in, in these dark times. And uh, all the Nordic uh, uh, students in my program, Denmark and uh, Finnish um, from Norway and, and the Swedes got together in a class to do uh, that, uh, the singing that they do for, for uh, Santa Lucia. Uh, and, you know, like it just brings, again, like so much um, cultural experiences uh, to, to the, the experience in general. Uh, so yeah, you will meet sweets too. <laughs> Definitely. Prince? Yeah, so um, cultural shock, I did not have much because I had been to Denmark before. So I suppose that the topography and then the weather will be the same. But one thing that surprised me was how quiet it were in the uh, in public transportations. They are really, really quiet. In Ghana, we are really nosy. We really want to know what is going on. And in Ghana, you when you sit in a bus or in a public transport, you can have the world burden on your shoulders. But when you leave the travel, uh, the transportation, you're like, where did that burden go? Because you have a conversation with somebody else, a total stranger, the person will not ask your name. And then you have this fulfilling chat. And then you go home, you're like, okay, that was really a very good conversation. As well, when it comes to 
um, the international students in our class, Nina and I, we help people across the world. We have about five or so suites, and the rest of us are international students um, from the US, from other parts of Europe, from Asia, North America, Africa, everywhere. So it's really good to actually learn from all of these students. And also we have people from diverse background, from business, sociology, I mean, courses, uh, programs that are not health related to programs that are health related. So there's this mixture that you're able to learn from those who have this health background and those who do not have, because they also bring a lot and unique perspectives. And that is what I like about the public health program. For sure. Thank you. Laurie? Uh, so for me, I'll say the question of the cultural shock is kind of linked to this question of uh, how, how sweet are and if they are shy, uh, because I feel like uh, when I arrived for me, it was it was really surprising to see how they they interact and how the, the social culture is uh, being from France, for example, we are uh, yeah, we, we go in the street and we gonna talk to each other. While here in Sweden, they're a bit shy, but they also respect a lot each other's personal space, which is really, really good. But it can be a bit of an adjustment to do at first. But uh, I think it's really nice to just discover this way of uh, taking things in a really relaxed way and not stressed for things that should not be stressful. So I think it's really good. And also sometimes, uh, trying to get them out a bit of their comfort zone because even if they're a bit shy uh, at the beginning, they are also really welcoming and they're really eager to get to know all of us and our cultures. So yes, I, I think it's, it's at the same time a cultural shock and an amazing cultural experience. Absolutely. And now we're really winding down to our last moments here. So uh, we have a few questions uh, that I know we could probably talk about longer, but I want to actually recommend that you reach out directly to some of our students. So for example, as I was wondering about access to African restaurants, I'm actually going to send you a link here to uh, a African restaurant we have in Lund called Africa Daily Market. But I think actually if you message Prince, perhaps he could tell you a bit more uh, about your favorite African restaurants in, in Malma as well, perhaps. Uh, but I want to and we also have a question about when is the earliest someone can join research and can you get scholarships for working at a research group? We actually have a webinar coming up in half an hour that will talk all about this in detail. So I want to give you a little spoiler that the earliest you can join research is immediately and there are scholarships and grants. Uh, but please join us in half an hour uh, at our practical experience opportunities webinar where you'll get to hear a lot more in depth about that as well. Uh, but otherwise, I would like to spend maybe the last minute or two just going around again to all of our panelists to maybe share if there's any final thing that you would like to say as some advice to students who are listening today, something that you wish someone had told you before coming to Lund, or anything that you feel like we haven't touched on yet and you want to make sure that you uh, share from your experience something. Uh, just a quick 30 second blurb. So we'll start with City and go around to everyone. <laughs> um, so uh, I forgot to mention this before, in case you get overwhelmed once you arrive or like even after you have spent one year. The university has um, excellent programs, like like they have the, the Student Health Center. You can always go on their website, register for different uh, sessions, counseling sessions, cognitive therapy sessions. So it's it's very easy to do that. And I would do, I do recommend you because sometimes the winter darkness and the depression I'm not even going to call it depression. It's just sometimes you can have mental health issues and it's completely okay to acknowledge it. Absolutely. Thank you. Prince? Yes. So I think the most important thing is, is to go out there and take a chance on people, right? Because uh, if you don't go out, if you don't make yourself available, you won't make friends. So make friends and uh, talk to people. If you have something that you're dealing with, open up. I mean, one thing about Sweden is that if you have a problem, you open up, they're always ready to help you. Nobody's going to think you are weak because everybody is weak in that way. We all need something sometime. So if that is weakness, then I am weak because I do ask for help when I, I need it. So let's go out there, ask for help, make friends and have fun. I mean, network, that is what is going to actually help you in, in your life. So do that. Absolutely. Lovely advice. Lloyd? 
Yes, uh, in line with what Pink is saying about taking the chance, it's it's not really an advice. It's just uh, I want to say to all of you who are thinking, should I apply to Sweden or or not? What what if I'm just take take the shot? It's such an incredible experience. So if you are wondering, maybe I should, then you should definitely try to apply to Sweden. Wonderful, Nina. Sort of echoing take the chance, go for it, but also make sure to take care of your mental health and yourself as well. Like this is all for you and what you are looking for. So go for it and take care of yourself. And Beatrice. This is a very great place to be as everybody has said. Um, and I will just go back to what Nina said before as well, like make uh, use of the FICA time. It is incredible just uh, to use that and, and, you know, having the coffee and the cakes, they have wonderful pastries in this country. Uh, and and it is a, another way of, of connecting with each other and, you know, being together and continue again, growing in this uh, experience that we are having as international students. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. What a lovely way to end the session. I think we've had a lot of really fantastic questions from our audience. So I want to thank our audience so much for sticking with us and sending us your questions. It's been wonderful to, to answer everything. I want to thank our panel as well, of course. We've had a lot of great experiences shared, and it's great to hear from so many different students, all studying different things from different places and hear about your experiences. Before everyone leaves, I just want to call your attention to a couple of last links here in the chat. So actually just a moment ago when we were talking about Student Health Center, I put a link there so you can read more about that, which Sidi was talking about. But of course, also you have uh, some links here to uh, student life and activities. There was a last question in the chat here about international mentors. So I put a link there where you can learn about the mentor program. Nina, as she mentioned earlier, is involved in the mentor program. So you can also chat with Nina directly and maybe ask some more questions uh, for those of you who had questions about the mentor program. You'll also find the link to all of our program courses uh, at Lund. So if you are interested and it sounds uh, kind of like the place that you would like to study after our chat here today, you can take a look and perhaps find a program that's relevant for you. The next link about applicant weeks is, of course, uh, the events that are going on right now. We have, again, as I just mentioned, in 30 minutes, a session about practical experience opportunities, how to get involved in research, internships, study abroad, jobs, and things that can really enhance your study experience. Later on today, we'll be talking to some alumni of Lind University, where you can hear more about their career outcomes. And tomorrow, our final day of applicant weeks, we will have webinars about how to apply to both master's level and bachelor's level studies. So please join us for those if you have more questions about that. The contact us link is where you can get in touch with my office. So if you have questions about the application, scholarships, or anything like that, you can always reach out to us uh, there in order to take a look. And finally, of course, as I've mentioned, the chat with students link, you can talk to all five of our students who are here today. If you have any follow-up questions you'd like to ask them, you can message them directly, as well as around 75 other students and alumni from all different countries, all different programs. So definitely take a look at that link. You can talk to a lot of students there and also read a lot of student blogs because I know there's been a lot of things written about some of the topics that we brought up today in terms of housing, mental health, resources, you name it, cultural shocks, everything. So take a look there and you can find a lot of other information. But otherwise, thank you so much, everyone, for your time. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.